the Torchlight Parade. In part due to the movies, this is commonly and mistakenly credited as originating as an extremist display of intimidation and power. These marches are often associated with Hitler, Nazis, and even neo-Nazis. Torches have also been part of hate groups like the Ku Klux Klan, which has used torches as part of rituals since its founding in Tennessee in the late 1860s. However, neither Hitler nor the KKK can claim the torch as distinct to any of their rituals or parades. In America in the 1860s, a group of young men known as the Wide Awakes performed lantern marches. They were a group associated with pro-democratic and union ideology. It may surprise some, but torchlight parades are still part of German military custom. This tradition is called Große Zappenstreich, which translates to Grand Tattoo, a military music event common amongst many militaries dating back to the 16th century. The origin of this ritual was a trumpet signal to end the selling of liquor in the military quarters and to prepare for lights out. During this process, the sergeant major would walk amongst camp, striking the taps of casks with a stick. The word Zappenstreich, on its own, can translate to tap strike. The Dutch would call this process Duden Taptu, meaning turn off the tap. Duden Taptu became tattoo in English, hence why these ceremonies are called a tattoo in English. These rituals grew in importance, incorporating prayer, song, musical bands, and of course torches. In Germany, the ceremony is now performed during national celebrations and solemn public commemorations such as the farewell ceremony for a German chancellor. Note the German imperial eagle, known as the Reichsadler, is also used during these events. Just like the torch, this heraldic symbol is strongly associated with Nazi Germany. However, this eagle is derived from the Roman eagle standard used some 2,000 years ago, and again used by Holy Roman Emperors and throughout German history. The Nazis frequently drew on historic symbols to aggrandize their ideology. The swastika, for example, was chosen in part due to its ancient and historic associations, particularly with the Iranian Aryans, who settled in northern India almost 4,000 years ago. Hitler further imagined his regime as the historic successor to the Holy Roman Empire and German Empire. These were referred to as the First and Second Reichs, with the Third Reich being the Nazi regime, which was to last for a thousand years. Auf ein tausendjähriges deutsches Reich. Though the use of fire in ceremonies greatly predates the Nazi regime in Germany, there are some valid reasons why it has a strong association with this time. Book burnings, of course, are one significant example, but not strictly unique to Nazi Germany. Even America has examples of book burnings, interestingly of German material, during World War I. One spectacle of fire that was unique to Germany might surprise many. The Olympic torch was introduced at the 1936 Berlin Summer Olympics, which was strongly associated with Hitler and the Nazi party. The Nazis used the Olympics to again symbolically connect Germany to the ancient world. The Olympic torch was run by 3,422 torchbearers from Olympia in Greece to Berlin. Hitler and the Nazis knew the power of symbolism and how it played to mob mentality. Fire greatly enhanced the pageantry and spectacle of Nazi events and incensed people, particularly youth. Fire was central to the Nuremberg rallies and propaganda films like Triumph of the Will. In Hitler's book Mein Kampf, Hitler refers to the swastika as having an effect like that of a flaming torch. He further described racial purity as the fuel for the torch of human culture. Fire has historically emboldened young men wielding it. It's one of the oldest mob weapons used to intimidate, indiscriminately kill, and even torture. Today, of course, hate groups still use torches to intimidate. However, the German armed forces have reclaimed their tradition from those who've tried to taint it. After World War II, the tradition was reintroduced in 1952 in West Germany and 1962 in the East. 
The tradition today hasn't changed much since 1838, when the Prussian Guard Corps arranged a great outdoor concert for King Frederick Wilhelm III of Prussia and guest, Tsar Nicholas I of Russia, in Potsdam. A few modern changes include allowing an honoured individual to choose three songs to be played by the band. I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching. If anyone ever offers you a torch or invite to any hate groups, consider taking the cotton candy instead. Have a nice rest of your day.